So I will uh, call the, uh, in about five minutes, I will call it the session so that we will really start, uh, we will start the presentation of uh, Dr. Posadas. Okay, at least Melchor is here now. Welcome, Melchor. Attorney is another lawyer, Melchor Magdama. Hello, can you unmute yourself, uh, Melchor? Everybody unmute. Amero pang pumasok. Jingle minis tamayo. Okay, lana tayo. Anim na tayo. Sama ko. Anim na tayo. Oh, it's being recorded now. Inaano ko yung chat. Hindi lo mabasyon yan yung ano mo. Message mo. The chat. Yeah, yung si Dr. Fauci kasi to eh. By the way, uh, do not pay attention to that first. Don't just pay attention to what we're doing now. Wala, yes, yes. wala. Wala, wala. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to sit in girl. What's this girl? Meron parang isang nito. Nito. Small na. Okay. At least we're recording now to the cloud. That's good. Okay. Good um, Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, and uh, it's a good evening here in Tallahassee. It's a good afternoon in uh, the place of Dr. Posadas. So I'm I'm calling the uh, I'm calling the session to order the plenary session. So um, and I'm recognizing uh, Dr. Posadas. He'll be presenting uh, a point of privilege. So um, in about uh, a few minutes, once he's ready. You should be ready to start. It's all yours now, uh, Dr. Posadas. Isabelo, sorry, uh, just, uh, just join us. Ilan na tayo? Yes, uh, Seriaco Isabelo joined, yes. Uh, there'll be more joining, and uh, I don't know. Would you like to uh, wait for five more minutes, Dr. Posadas, or we, we proceed now? Let's wait for five minutes. We can, we can okay. afford five minutes. People are coming in right now, yeah. Okay. And they are oh, just... Okay. Uh, Given our very, very good uh, uh, internet service in the Philippines, one of the best in the world, we could expect this kind of thing. Yes, 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 yes. Correct, correct, correct. Doc, attorney Melchor, attorney Melchor, may speak them before Dr. Posadas. Ano yung email mo, attorney Melchor? Huh? Email? Um, yeah. Melchor.pangdamo at gmail.com. My first okay. name is Melchor. His name is gmail.com. Melchor. I'll, I'll place it in the chat box. He will formerly be chief of staff of uh, Chairman Melo in Comelec. Uh, legal, legal. Or you were the legal department then? I don't know if my voice is being heard. Melchor Magdamo. I was typing it Melchor Magdamo at gmail.com. Okay, welcome, welcome, Jingle. How are you? Why don't you start your video? And also, uh, Jan. Jan Good morning. Very cheerful, Jingle. Para walang problema sa mundo. Mundo mga problema sa atin. <laughs> Good. Okay, uh, Dr. Posadas, I have already recognized him and he's ready to deliver his uh, point of privilege if he wanted five more minutes so that maybe one or two more people can join. 
I would expect that after 30 minutes, more will be joining us, but right now, it's just us. Uh, the important thing is to have this on record because uh, we are preparing for the June 12 uh, event, which will be, um, which a lot of people are looking forward to, although a lot of people are preventing it from happening. But we will be uh, looking no, forward to that. There are, uh, pero ngayon, ang mga chismes dito ngayon, sa, na nasagap ko sa mga ibang mga tao dyan sa Manila, uh, matutuloy na raw si Duterte Duterte. Ano na ang wag? June 12, mag, uh, ano rin, mag-organize na yung sambayanan. 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 Yung grupo nila... Carpio, I think. Carpio, Tony Carpio. Oh, yun ang uh, grupo nila. Iisa raw silang grupo, lahat ng mga opposed kay Tony Carpio. Unite under one movement, which is Sambayanan. Basta mas mo. Well, we are, we are not bothered by the political cycle. We are organizing the uh, 8099 Congress. We are our agenda is uh, revival of the 1899 Philippine Constitution and uh, defining the uh, political agenda of uh, the content of the debate in the coming elections. We don't care. We don't care about who the candidate is. We care about uh, what their platform could contain. So that is what we are focusing uh, on. Our group will not be at the moment endorsing anybody <laughs> unless uh, a consensus develops. But right now, we are not involved in those kinds of uh, speculation as to kung sino ang supportahan natin. According to some people, si, uh, si Manny Pacquiao is being kicked out of PDP Laban. Is that true? Oh, mahirap tanggalin si, ano, si Manny Pacquiao. Ito naman. Kasi, natanggalin, natanggalin daw siya eh. Nag-schedule ang PDP Laban and... Uh, Mr. Kusi, yung secretary ng Department of Energy ng ano, convention, ilan lang umatend. Wala pa yan, Andrew. Ano ba? Sabi na niya, maraming umatend. Uh, everybody is hedging. Baka nga maging kandidato si Pacquiao. If Pacquiao wins the Spence fight, then he will be a stronger candidate. If he loses, he might not proceed to run anymore. Ah. August, mayroon pa siyang laban. Kay Terence, Spencer, August, Spencer. August 21, Spencer. August 21. Pag matalo oh, okay siya, lang. hindi na siya siguro tatakbo. <laughs> Pag manalo, baka tuloy-tuloy siya. Eh, pero nung time na tumakbo siya, representative, kalaban niya yung isang babae na uh, si Edsa, talo siya. Kahit talo siya sa baksi. Now, let me ask something by uh, sa speaker natin, si Dr. Roberto Posadas. What is the progress, uh, Robert, of contacting the other descendants of the signatories to the 1899 Constitution? Oh, my join. Welcome, welcome uh, Gian and welcome uh, Benvenido Lorque. We have uh, Dr. Pusadas here about to deliver his point of privilege. I have called the session to order and uh, since we are not uh, fully organized, I am not entertaining questions about quorum because we have not yet fully organized the Congress. But today we will be hearing uh, Dr. Pusadas uh, give us uh, his point of privilege speech on the uh, concerns that are uh, momentous to the 1899 movement, which he is the head of. Uh, he is uh, our, I think our five minutes are almost up, uh, Dr. Posada. So in one minute, I think uh, the whole uh, platform would be yours. Okay. I recognize Dr. Roberto Posadas representing Pangasinan. Okay, Mr. Speaker, Representative from Bayangbang, Pangasinan, Roberto Feliciano Posadas rises to be recognized on a point of privilege. You're recognized. To open 
our first Congress of the Republic of our beloved Philippines, Mr. Speaker. Our most compassionate and patriotic representatives of the first plenary session of Congress of the Republic of the Philippines under the most sovereign 1898 constitution promulgated by President Emilio Aguinaldo in 1899. My heart is throbbing and my voice is trembling as I speak now because never thought or an imagination ever occurred in my lifetime until my advancing years that this moment in Philippine history, more so in a first congressional capture, would pinpoint me as your servant for our people. As a reference to a footnote in history and also for your respective forefathers and your parents' stories later on, my grandfather, Dr. Antonio Feliciano, as related by my late mother, Amparo Feliciano Posadas, in addition to being a Malolos Congress delegate from Pangasinan, was in later years, was the attending physician for Yonor Rivera's firstborn child in Dagupan. He was the first University of Santa Tomas Medical School graduate from the province of Pangasinan. At which university also I graduated with a bachelor's degree in philosophy and letters in 1961 and from San Diego in 1985, doctorate in students. Let us now most respectfully with courage, honor, and dignity on this day of determined destiny, officially open our country's first plenary Congress to begin our God-given claim to complete, indeed, fulfill our most supreme people's will under allegiance and trust in a never-ending eternal Vox Populi, Vox Dei. The voice of the people is the voice of God. Again, as a God-given gift endowed with freedom to determine our chart to navigate our ship of state in the course of national and international events on lands and high seas. This will be Philippines self-reliance for without self-reliance and determination, no nation is truly sovereign and independent sans self-reliance, but with maximum tolerance and compassion. For above and beyond our past and future fate, forged by our forefathers' blood, sweat, and tears, hearkens on the horizon an eternal great sovereign nation for Filipinos and by the people of the first de jure and pure Filipino constitution. Our movement indeed, our advocacy is to peacefully shift from a broken 1987 constitution to reorganize a new nation at last be it indirectly through a transition revolutionary government and its complexity of forming a time-consuming charter change, or a tight rope balancing act rather than putting together and thus could risk bringing it to the brink of social cataclysm, short perhaps of an overhaul of same system, political, social, and cultural habits. or our most still valid and alive, preferable, orderly, direct switch on instant adoption and adaptation with the swear of allegiance by President Rodrigo Roa Duterte as commander in chief of the armed forces of the Philippines and as an extension of the Katipunan army. Thus, sparing our already pandemic grip and greed imposed on our suffering people and leading to a point of no return, boiling up and venting desperately when Filipinos are now more fearful of their government in all branches again, more fearful of their government than the unidentified virus itself. Notwithstanding 
any turn of events looming from the various quarters declaration of revolutionary government and that of to be padded and paid 22 or 2022 election results. Amidst and through all these turn of events, in either the worst of times or the best of times, in our moving history, now in action, our Malolos 1899 movement will forge on with our own sweat, blood, and tears, as so be it. Even as our movement to ship ship of state is timeless and priceless, upon a petition to invoke any president's out of office or duty to redress people's grievances under any democratic constitution. We will always pray for heaven to help us all, or we will help to mark ourselves in our lifetime and for all time. Our strong sovereign stance of self-reliance is now best exemplified by the federal-like autonomous regions where their jurisdictional barangay or LGU governance are now usurped by the overextended or expired imposition of the national emergency law. If this were under a parliamentary federal constitution, autonomous governance of LGUs or barangays would have been the timely legal orderly scape valves or mechanisms for pent up politics and people's grievances to be heeded and healed. A country is not a nation without a unification, self-reliance and compassion for our people's common welfare. As a house is not a home without families, as a country is not a nation without compassion and self-reliance. For the moment compassion dies in our country, our nation begins to die even before it begins. Our Malolos movement for a pure Filipino constitution for a parliamentary federal government will unify self-reliant independent regional or provincial jurisdictions, each represented in one common parliamentary form. It is then unified by bonds of common all nation goals for security and defense, economic progress, and peace among other nations. Imagine the pride, industry initiatives, or self-reliance for discipline and health, nature or natural resources, resourcefulness of peoples themselves, and representatives thereof for each respective area, like your very own home, not a mere house in a region or a jurisdiction. We will move on forward to imagine, to dream, and to plan, strive and achieve, lest oblivion prevail again and corruption prevail again. For another, impossible dream, no, never. Surrender again, but never surrender again but mark our words and deeds. With our movement, we will climb even another mountain and never ever to retreat again. And so Mr. Speaker and my fellow compatriots, thank you and we move on. Thank you, Dr. Posadas. Um, the um, floor is open for questions for Dr. Posadas. And, uh, anybody can raise their hand or just stop right now and ask questions regarding um, your uh, qualifications for uh, Dr. Posadas' point of privilege. Let's give him a big hand. Good morning, Dr. Posadas. Hi. Neil Ramos. I'm Jim Hernandez. Yeah. Go ahead, you have the question, no? Sorry. You can ask the question of Dr. Posadas. Dr. Posadas just uh, delivered a speech. You have caught some of it. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Anybody can ask Sorry to have missed the. I, I was with my mother. I was seeing my mother. She is in the hospital. Okay. You're one of the. Uh, uh, Mr. Hernandez. Yes. 
Any questions from uh, Jingle or from uh, Giancarlo or Mr. Lurke? Because I think uh, Mr. Lurke, uh, the uh, Dr. Posadas mentioned your movement, the Red Group movement, which will make a declaration on June 12. Uh, what would be your reaction to his mention of your group? Mr. Lurke, you have the floor. Are you, have you heard us? Well, I think uh, Mr. Lurke, he has no movement in his uh, display, so maybe he's off. Any question, Giancarlo uh, UI or? Uh, May I recognize first? So Josie, but I'll say he's present here. He's present here. Josie, but I'll say. Yes, good morning. Good morning, good morning. gentlemen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Good morning. Well, for those who are just logging in right now, Dr. Posadas have just presented his, uh, to us uh, the guy made my movement. And now the, the floor is open to questions and interpolation of uh, Dr. Posadas. Well, uh, I am representing first the speaker of Tabi and you know. Why do you need to do this, Dr. Posada? Yes. Why do you need to do this? Yes. What's the reason for this? For the initial... Cannot hear you well, Johnny uh, Carlo. You are you're very you're coming in choppy. You cannot hear you at all. You cannot make out what you're saying. Uh, there's nothing at all. Redmi eight. Uh, aid. Are you? Do you want to hear, ask uh, a question? Go ahead. Yes. Good uh, morning. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. You're, you're, okay. you're, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, I presume that uh, if we go back to the Manolo's Constitution, all the other constitution and uh, after that will become null and void so all the amendments to that to those other constitutions will also be null and void am i correct yeah no okay so if that is the case the comelec is also null and void the, upon upon adoption of the Malolos Constitution, the it, the Comelec disappears. Okay, so what will replace the Comelec? Well, uh, the historical antecedent is that the uh, 1899 uh, 1898 Congress had uh, people who were elected and all that. And so let us give the floor to. Uh, Dr. Posadas to explain that. Okay. So, the, the uh, complete form of government under a uh, still valid and the jure and still existing, never abolished 1899 constitution take its place and all other forms, agencies, the former constitution or government. Will be abolished and 
disappear from the face of the earth. And uh, there will be uh, adaptation of election uh, laws and other branches of the government accordingly. And there will be retrofitting, adjustment, there will be a commission. And most probably, if it comes to a point where the elections have been for 2022, the Supreme Court and the, um, with the uh, cooperation of the armed forces of the Philippines will have to conduct the 22, 2022 elections. Elections will never be abolished. Elections will still go on democratically, but they will have to be regulated and managed by the Supreme Court and the armed forces of the Philippines as a transition process to uh, completely uh, adopt and retrofit all the laws and uh, respective uh, jurisdictions under the Malolos Constitution. Mr. Magdamo, if recognized, he wants to add something to the response of the Apusadas. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Magdamo, unmute yourself. Mm. Uh, this is to <clears throat> reassure those uh, who are afraid of violence. Because always remember when 1899 was promulgated, way back in year 1899. Uh, the situation there was uh, uh, volatile. In section 94 of the original 1899 constitution, there is a provision there that allows for graceful exit. Which means whatever you find existing, you must give them an opportunity. You don't just chop off their head you just you give them you give them a chance to live gracefully which means for example uh, if you if 1899 constitution were to resurrect today those in power today you don't just shoot them no? you, 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 you you give them a notice give them a conviction notice to finish to wind up and uh, to leave you know uh, it, it's, it's not violent however it, it may become violent eventually you know um, but there's, this is to reassure those peace-loving citizens who, who, who want to avoid violence that there's this provision in Section 94 of the 1899 Constitution, which, by the way, Felipe Calderon copied much of 1899 Constitution from Costa Rica. In turn, copied much from the French Constitution. And in, in France, they, they had a turmoil in the French Revolution. There, it was drastic. Yeah? They chopped off the head of Maria Antonia, if you recall. That's why they, they revised the French Constitution many times. They, they, they inserted what, what is called the Le Misera provisions, wherein you, you, you become magnanimous to, do, to those who you, who you find. Uh, uh, you want to be a little bit magnanimous to them. You don't just chop off their head. Give them an opportunity to live, to live peacefully. If you if you don't live peacefully, then that, that's the only time violence may come in, perhaps. And hopefully, you can avoid that. That is to just, just to reassure. Uh, who was not asking question? Red, red me, red me, red me. Red me. Red me. Baka 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 violent. Uh, there is this section 94 in the 1899 Constitution, which which will dissipate violence, which will postpone at least. It, it cannot prevent violence. It will at least postpone violence. To and the last uh, Mr. Speaker, no praise. Mr. Speaker. Yes. I want to recognize uh, Joffrey no Balse. He can unmute himself. He wants to add something to the discussion. Go ahead, Joffrey Balse. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my question is. Can you hear me? Yes, you can. Your little chat is speaking. Can I request others who are not speaking mute themselves because the background noise is quite distracting? 
Yeah, it's requesting that everybody else is not talking. Please mute yourselves so that uh, no background noise feedbacks into the uh, speaker. Go ahead, uh, uh, Jeffrey. All right, thank you. Uh, my question is to our to Dr. Posadas. Is if the agencies will be dissolved because they are no longer recognized by the 1899 Constitution. What will its effect be on the current civil servants employed by the government if their agencies are dissolved? That's the first question. My second question is, what of the monetary Central Monetary Authority, we will uh, still have to maintain our currency. Uh, what, will we, what will happen? Will we go back to a regime that was pegging the Philippine peso to the Mexican peso, uh, which may be, which definitely is, uh, can cause a lot of uh, confusion in the markets. And third, do we, do we revert to a taxation or fiscal governance that was prescribed in the 1899 Constitution? Are all of the taxes that, we, that the Philippines are being charged with, just are, are they, will they all be suspended and do we revert to the 1899 fiscal policy? So those are my three questions for our excellent speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Obasadas, can you respond to that? Yes. Very good, very good questions. Um, I let me start. Hello, po, sir. Hi, kamusta? Let me start with a delineation of uh, uh, a uh, Malolos Constitution governance or constitution uh, as a uh, it is not a rebellion. It is not a rebellion against the uh, 1987 Constitution or President Duterte himself. As a matter of fact, we'd rather have uh, President Duterte declare his uh, Pledge of Allegiance to the Malolos Constitution, thereby instantly creating a ship of state, a building where there are rooms to be fitted and retrofitted accordingly. So there will the commission and all other employees and agencies will go on. And as a matter of fact, uh, in, a, uh, in the 1899 constitution or parliamentary form of government, individual rights are intact. It's right there and then. All individual rights, both uh, Filipinos, friends and foreigners are uh, rights are intact in that uh, there will be no vacuum of police enforcement, security, and defense. As right then and there, the government will hit the deck running and therefore will make all the adjustments and the process necessary to segue into all of these agencies and commissions. And therefore, all the agents and uh, employees and officials remain intact accordingly until such time there will be an orderly change of uh, uh, heads or officers in charge and the very representatives of the Congress themselves will have their own election. In the meantime, the Congress and the uh, members of Congress and the Senate will remain until 2022 or their term accordingly will end on 2022 for another set of elections, this time for a parlim for parliamentary members of the uh, Malolos Constitution or federal government. So there need be no fear that everything will be chaotic, disorderly, and, uh, and violence because uh, there will be a, a set of uh, individual rights intact accordingly. And as a matter of fact, with the instant uh, adaptation, since there is no vacuum, there will never, or a habeas corpus declaration, will, will, uh, habeas corpus need not be suspended because completely the police and the uh, uh, armed forces of the Philippines will continue on. 
So there is no vacuum. Everything will work right away, but for the other agencies that will be retrofitted and changed accordingly, very orderly and peaceful. Thank you very much, Dr. Posadas. Can I have a follow through question? I read Go ahead, about the um, and I would, I would imagine, therefore, in order for the retrofitting to immediately happen, there must be a series of administrative orders or presidential decree or executive instructions for that retrofitting that you have mentioned. Have we prepared a series of presidential orders? That's my first question. The second question will also be quite uh, uh, proactive. Certain regions that may declare themselves loyal to the 1987 and belligerent towards the First Republic that will be restored. Thank you. Go ahead, uh, Dr. Pichana, on the floor. Uh, Mector, I didn't quite uh, get that. Can you uh, can you uh, two questions? Yourself, Sorry, this is Geoffrey. Yeah. Doctor Posadas, a follow through question. When you okay, mentioned you were... retrofitting, you mentioned retrofitting. Would it not require a series of presidential decrees or orders? in order for it to take effect as soon as possible. In the same way, Marcos had a, had a series of presidential decrees for a transition into the 1973 Constitution. Yes. Um, number two, uh, no, the second question is, how do we deal with local governments that may declare themselves belligerent and loyal to the 1987 Constitution? Can I request uh, Mr. Speaker Melchor to, uh, to pick that up for me? The, uh, the question posed was that uh, will this require a lot of changes to retrofit the Constitution to the current context of the building condition? And uh, what will be done to those who would not? Uh, follow the allegiances or submit the allegiance to the 1899 Constitution. Is that the correct question, uh, Mr. Balsa? Yes, to clarify, to be more specific, do have we prepared a series of presidential orders to, to put into motion the retrofitting required okay. for, smooth, uh, for a smooth transition? And number yeah. two, if I may, how if I may certainly information. The uh, American Constitution has been subjected to 32 amendments to uh, make it the Constitution that it is today for the United States. And out of these 32, or, uh, 32 uh, amendments, 27 has been uh, properly ratified by the states because in the United States, the amendments to the Constitution are ratified state by state. So definitely uh, there will be changes uh, to the Constitution to make it fit the existing condition. The 1898 constitution must be changed to fit the existing conditions of the country. I will let uh, Dr. Posada elaborate on that. Yeah, of course, uh, the, uh, the president himself, once he uh, pledges allegiance, instantly the, uh, the, uh, the 1899 constitution takes effect. So in effect, he becomes the first prime minister uh, doing all these uh, uh, adjustments and ad and adoptions or adaptation rather than uh, uh, rather than uh, first uh, doing uh, a series of decrees and orders and he will have to adjust everything accordingly as to the need and the timing of the process so as a prime minister, no longer as a president. So as far as that is concerned, to your question, 
there are not as yet any prepared uh, prime minister decrees or orders. That will happen. That will happen for sure, and and eventually that will have to happen because all of these things will be adjusted in time and simultaneously with what's happening as the turn of event. Mr. Speaker, I can you kindly mute others who are not speaking? Can you come to me? I'm requesting everybody to be mute with a chat message, but I'm not the one controlling the operations. Yeah, okay. Uh, who is the host? Uh, uh, Rufino Bartolaba, can you please mute everyone first? I'm trying, to. I'm, trying to. I'm trying to. And request. I'm already a mute. But there, is still, there are still extraneous uh, noise going on. Yes. Even if I'm, uh, I think mute the people everybody. with their microphones on are. It could be coming from your from your end, uh, Mr. No, uh, I have. Well said. If I if I mute myself, the, the, the sound can. Okay. Uh, it's not. Na na ako eh. If you can, if you can hear yourself, then you are not muted. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, can I request uh, uh, Doctor Posadas to continue speaking, please, in response to uh, my question? As I was saying, uh, Joffrey. Uh, let uh, uh, be assured that uh, President Duterte will be the first prime minister in transition in governing and enforcing the, uh, the uh, laws of the highest law of the land, the Malolos Constitution, accordingly. So necessarily, there will be a decrease in time for all of these adjustments and processes. But seeing to it that uh, individual rights are protected and intact and never, never according to the Malos Constitution uh, uh, set of uh, individual rights protection, never will the prime minister violate it, the constitution itself at the beginning, especially at the beginning of time or never or ever will be violated. He will act accordingly, according to the uh, laws and adaptations and adjustments of the Malolos Constitution. And um, it's not a rebellion where everybody can be uh, arrested or uh, uh, or uh, dismissed uh, nor appointed uh, so much so that uh, there will be so uh, disorderly uh, conduct of uh, events and at the same time uh, he will uh, see to it that all of these will be retrofitted and even probably create a commission of reconciliation but all the other all criminal laws will remain intact and that's very important because first of all, all the uh, former charges and existing criminal cases will have to be pursued to, the, to its end, to its justifiable end, because nobody will be spared. And everything will be done through a reconciliation process and adjustments according to the agencies of the new constitution. Thank you very much, Dr. Posadas. Okay. Will you indulge me in asking another legal question? Go ahead, you recognize. Thank you very much. Uh, how about certain oh. legislation oh. that we have, whose basis, oh. is, uh, whose basis is on? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye 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 bye. How about other laws and legislation like the civil code, the family code, the criminal code that you've mentioned, will they be still in effect because they, their foundation is more on the basis of uh, common law rather than a con the constitution itself? That's my second, that's my other question. <laughs> 
Thank you. Yeah, uh, in the absence of a common law, we were still going to be, I suppose, the Malolos Constitution is in effect according to a certain, uh, uh, in the nature of codified uh, laws. And we are not uh, really, uh, uh, you know, after all, in, in England, they don't have a constitution. They are all under a common law that uh, uh, for all uh, good to be done, uh, theory, and principles of uh, never a uh, never the means to justify or never the end to justify the means, and we will have all all these codified laws and statutes intact accordingly until they are made in such a way that they will be retrofitted accordingly. But all remaining charges and existing criminal charges will have to be pursued to its end. Thank you. Just to clarify, so what is not covered by the 1899 Constitution will be referred to common law. Is that right? Thank you. I, uh, well, uh, it's a little uh, uh, anticipatory and uh, I uh, probably will not guess an answer on that matter because there are codified and uh, statutory laws that will cover almost everything. But in the absence, perhaps, of uh, a codified or a, stat a statutory law or rule, then probably even common sense will have to apply, if not common law. A uh, point of clarification only. Um, the, uh, all the municipal laws, and by municipal laws, all the laws that apply within the territory of the Philippines will uh, subsist after the adoption of the 1899 constitution. It can only be revised based on processes uh, that are legislative and also by a challenge to the Supreme Court under the ages of the uh, 1899 constitution this time. So we will have stability and the transition will not be drastic because these processes will be in place. We're in uh, a process of rationalization and reconciliation will be done. In case uh, Attorney Melchor Magdama would like to chime in, uh, I recognize him right now to clarify the questions asked by uh, Mr. Balsi. The so questions. Mr. Magdama. Yeah. Thank you. The questions of Mr. Geoffrey Balsi pertain to non political clause. Like, for example, if we dehibernate the 1899 Constitution today. What will happen to marriage laws? May a 17-year-old boy marry a 17-year-old girl that is void under our present laws? Th those type of laws will remain existing, will remain subsisting. Those are non-political laws, common laws. Uh, our criminal law is 1931, which means it, it, it was. It, we already have a, the revised penal code before the 1935 Constitution. Our civil code is 1951, which, or 1949 rather, which means long, long before the 1987 constitution, constitution, we already had a civil code, which came from a Spanish civil code, which is earlier than uh, the 1899. So those are non-political laws. It won't affect them. The monetary system, they are also, um, the, the, we, we will not jump back to the peso, the Mexican peso of 18, uh, 1800s, because, uh, uh, monetary laws are ma the main bulk of monetary laws are non-political. On only a few portion of the of the monetary laws are political. So there will be stability, but but we can evolve them gradually to align with the with the uh, spirit of the 1899 Constitution. Well, thank you very much. I found that uh, I think we have to educate. We have to have a general public education when that happens. Uh, but I am, I'm, thank you for the answers. Thank you, Geoffrey. Okay, uh, any, any other uh, source of interpolation? I recognize uh, Remy at okay. eight, um, which is really Ida Enriquez. You are muted, you're muted. Uh, we cannot hear you because you're muted, Ida. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm, I was not referring to uh, 
uh, on my first question, I was not preparing or I, I am not afraid of uh, there's going to be chaos after. What I would like to know is how do we uh, how do we implement all the rules and regulations of the Malolos Constitution to our present condition without uh, any problem with the with the terrorist, the barm, and the and the smugglers, because uh, especially the the pandemic now. How do we challenge that? And also, how do we arrange for the transition from the Congress and the Senate to our new Congress and Senate? Go ahead, Dr. Prasad, if you recognize. Yeah. Uh, first of all, the criminal laws are existing uh, against uh, all kinds of crimes, drugs, and so forth and so on. They will not be suspended at all. They will go on because uh, the individual rights of the Malolos Constitution specifies that these are all protected and everybody will be according to the uh, uh, due process of law. And with the adoption, Ma with the adoption of the, of the system Ma itself, Ma there will be no uh, suspension of habeas corpus. Okay? Things, all enforcement of all uh, uh, criminal laws against drug and syndicate and lords and uh, drug lords and, and criminals. And as a matter of fact, all existing charges will remain intact to up to the end where it is uh, stalled and justified. But in the meantime, uh, everything will go on as they are without any interruption at all. But except for the fact that it will not be the president anymore, as, uh, as a, uh, under a presidential system, but in a form of a parliamentary federal government, that he will become the prime minister to see to it that he will still be the chief enforcer of all criminal laws. Of course, the, the uh, branches of the uh, armed forces of the Philippines and the, and the Philippine uh, uh, police. So rest assured, Nothing will be uh, abolished in so far as all of these uh, laws are concerned. They will have to go on because the government system hits the deck running right away because there is already an existing ship to transfer to. The ship of 1987 constitution will be will no longer be applied. It's gone. Okay, so uh, it will be done accordingly and orderly. And uh, uh, perhaps even through uh, temporary uh, uh, urgent commission to make all of this and retrofit and and uh, segue and make all the uh, connections work together. So there will be no chaos, no uh, violence, because after all, there will be no there is no need to spend habeas corpus. Thank uh, you very much. I have the floor, Mr. Uh, speaker. Uh, I'll be allowed to speak. Uh, Please, go on. you have to raise your hand uh, if you want to speak. Somebody is raising your hand. The right now is uh, uh, having this and will give you the floor right there. Go ahead, Major. Okay, I'll make it short. In fairness, kasi may naunang nag-raise ng hand eh. In, in favor of, uh, in fairness, sorry to the one who raised the hand, bro, but the speaker gave it to me. Anyway, uh, we, we go to the, go back to history. 
if you, you if you recall in, in the 1899 constitution i think it's section 100 that there is a council one who will do the transition decrees will be a council not, not a single dictator or in section 100 it is following the tradition of 1892 the, the, found, the founding of the Katipunan. Remember when Jose Rizal was arrested 1892, July 7, which is the foundation of the, the Katipunan. Jose Rizal was arrested. They, they thought he was killed. They thought he was salvaged. A group of seven consisting of uh, Leodato Arellano, Andres Bonifacio, and five others. They, they formed a council which became known as the Taasan Katagalang Galang in Katipunan, or Katipunan for short. That Katipunan provision is still in 1899. It's section 100 of 1899. So what we can do today is, since we cannot form a parliament yet, we, we are so few here. Like, how many attended this, this right now? We're just, I think we're just 12 or 14. At least we, we can form, um, we can form a council. In the council of seven. We cannot form a parliament. Okay, thank you. At least form a council. I'm following section 100 of, of, of the 99 constitution and let that council issue the transition to make the, the, the transition vote. If we cannot achieve the numbers, of course, if, if we can achieve the numbers in form of parliament, then why not? 210, I think historically it was 200. Can we, can we, can we make 210? If not, that is to start with seven. So that is to uh, perhaps to answer red. I don't know, red. Um, red I am Aida. Red me is Aida. <laughs> Thank you very much. I am recognizing uh, Jaime Hernandez. He has not spoken clearly. You can talk Hi. now, Jaime Hernandez. Go ahead. Oh, he muted himself. Okay, I'm recognizing uh, Jaime Carlo Iway. You want to talk? Go ahead. Ah uh, yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, before we go too far, I heard uh, Mayor Brillante saying, talking about uh, the uh, holding of elections in 2022. I doubt that it should be conducted uh, very soon at all because. You know, uh, in Thailand, where they just had a coup data, uh, the military, the military would uh, would intervene because of a failure or maybe cheating in the elections. In our case, uh, it's it's difficult because you know everyone knows how the election goes here in the Philippines. It takes much more than having a, a voting out a COMELEC or COMELEC. It's about education, educating the people. So with all this uh, buying out, buying out by voting, uh, vote buying by politicians, uh, I don't think we should be holding an elections too soon in the next, uh, next year. So I don't think uh, one year or between now and um, the first Monday of May would be uh, a good time to hold an election. So uh, a rejoinder to that, a rejoinder to that, uh, 
uh, yung Mr. Speaker, uh, the barangay captains, the barangay captains, uh, our punong barangays, will be will be still uh, in the position long after the president will have uh, will have exited in 2022. So by this time, I think uh, this uh, are having are now having this uh, emergency. The president, the president now, short of uh, short of waiting for the 20, 2022 elections, uh, the president will now have to appoint all the local officials because appointing will be no different from our from elections. Having an elections, who who yielded for who? will yield uh, uh, local officials who had bought or who have bought of their office. So I think the president will have this time to appoint all elective of, uh, local officials to toe the line in implementing our national emergency. Oh, this is the our national the national emergency we're having now is uh, I think a blessing in disguise, so that the president will uh, issue orders direct to the people who will who will follow him and the uh, duly constituted authority in the president being our leader in this revolutionary uh, uh, government. And uh, for example, uh, as I am representing Bicol for now, I've been, uh, there is this important in uh, every revolutionary mood, the people are now, for example, in Albay, the revolutionary mood is as uh, flourishing as ever because uh, the issue of uh, electricity, the oligarch there has, uh, has taken control. And the, what used to be the, uh, the genius, the Marcos genius of having uh, um, people-owned people uh, electric cooperative, uh, which is a uh, Marcos genius because the its creation and in link with the NEA, the Electrification Administration, National Electrification Administration, is to electric, uh, to put electricity in the country. So that is one example, the election, the revolutionary mood. And then for, uh, may I now go to the uh, citizen army that should be that should uh, be in control because we have a law on the citizen army. I have, uh, I am a citizen of, an, I am an officer in the U UP uh, Corps of Cadets in my college years. So I think uh, right in Albay, I have already talked the citizen army. This is the reserve force who are to address the, uh, the, standing army that we have now they should be used citizen army this is this are this is called the citizen army uh, to, to uh, maybe take control of any uh, any uh, uh, violent violent behavior coming from the all those to be affected that is, uh, uh, may, and may I reiterate first here that uh, just as we had this, uh, we want to vote out. If by voting out, uh, we choose these oligarchs, uh, just like in, just like Thailand now, they had a coup d'etat the military intervenes and then they would call an election 
And in the meantime, a junta, a junta, military junta takes over. But only for the meantime to prepare for, uh, to hold, to prepare for the holding of national elections. So we will have to dif uh, differ, differ first the holding of elections until we educate the people. This is not so simple uh, as legislating as by the 1899, it will legislate uh, or keep or uh, create the legislate the extinction of the Comelec, but this is not so simple as uh, having Comelec thrown out of the window. But uh, the national government, together with the people who will be appointed in the local level, to all local elections who will serve and uh, who will implement the national emergency program of government and the economic policies and continuing the program of government and of anti-corruption uh, policy of the government. Uh, we will still, we will conduct an education, uh, extensive education program uh, and the, in wearing out the, all these uh, attitudes of the people, because the people who are now, who are bought, who are, takes control of our elections, these people who are, who are bought, takes control of the elections. We who are the wise, who will vote uh, good uh, government, we cannot do this. We cannot do it because of all these the numbers that we call the majority, which become putative as a result, we have a government out of a dishonest people. Uh, that's all, Mr. Speaker. Okay, I'll give the floor to the speaker, uh, the uh, presenter of the point of privilege, Roberto Posadas, and after that, Lecture Magdama after him. Go ahead, Robert. I was able to identify the, who is using the electric fan. In a minute, kuna siya kaya na wala yung extra news. Okay, go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert Posadas. Uh, what was that again, Gil? The uh, there was uh, a lengthy comment from Jaime Hernandez uh, regarding. Uh, in summary, I would say that he doesn't like any. Uh, peaceful transition, or uh, not not peaceful, but uh, no elections after the takeover, or after oh, yeah. the shift to the 1898 constitution. He wants uh, a period of prolonged voter education before any elections to normalcy are made. Uh, so you can comment on that, and after that, Mr. Magdamo can also chime in. No, we uh, probably it would be in the best interest of. Uh, of the country and of the people just to proceed with the elections of 2022 as a schedule, but with a difference uh, of, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, management and administration of the elections in that uh, Smartmatic and Comelec will no longer be the uh, agency and the uh, processes by which uh, election will be conducted. And uh, through the supervision of the Supreme Court and the uh, enforcement of the uh, armed forces of the Philippines, the uh, uh, candidates will have just to be uh, candidates for members of the parliament, no longer as a member of the, of the House of Representatives, or there will be only one House of Congress. So every candidate for the uh, legislature will have to be, or will have to run as a candidate to be a member of the parliament or one House. And that of the uh, president and vice president, of course, will have to be changed temporarily uh, as uh, to the position of uh, a prime minister uh, for the uh, in the absence of uh, in the absence of 
any uh, candidates for the prime minister, maybe the uh, present prime minister or President Duterte himself, will have to continue on. It will be an orderly process for uh, another election uh, of uh, more members of the Congress or House of Parliament and the presidency itself. But there should be no gap in the processes because, uh, you know, vacuum or without any governance at all or administration of any uh, normal and uh, scheduled uh, elections or processes or even the uh, enforcement of the laws uh, will have to go on. And uh, there will be more uh, order, uh, orderly uh, conduct of, uh, of enforcement uh, in the absence of uh, anything else because uh, disorder and uh, chaos loves a vacuum. If there's no activity, a normal activity as scheduled, there will be more uh, disorderly conduct and uh, more uh, adjustments uh, to be uh, uh, suggested by the people themselves because there is no uh, existing uh, uh, representation of their uh, districts and provinces in one common uh, house of parliament. Thank you, Dr. Posadas. Uh, Chair Magdamo, can you, will you be able to chime in there? Yes, although I see Giancarlo raising his hand, no? but anyway, this will be short. Uh, regarding the uh, point of Jaime Hernandez, who, by the way, he's my friend, no? Kasama ko siya na ng People Power 1986, nagtutulak ng tanke. He was with me at that time, no? Um, regarding his point about no elections in 2022 next year, I think we, we are not going to have any elections next year, even if we proceed with the elections, there will be none because Smartmatic will be done counting it. So what will be what will be ha happening next year is selection rather than election. So anyway, assuming that Duterte, Sara Duterte runs as president and Rodrigo Duterte runs as vice president, since Smartmatic is the one counting, most probably that's it. Uh, it's, it's a done deal. However, we can use that as ay, paano magagalit ang tao eh? Medyo, medyo pangit tingnan, nakakasuka tingnan. <laughs> Actually, no, the people's anger may, may become the key to, to uh, clamoring for system change. And that, that's where 1899 perhaps can come in. That means no, 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 no suspension. Okay, uh, go ahead, uh, Mr. Carlo. We're not going to recognize now. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. No? May I ask a question, Lampo? What is the role of uh, youth now in this uh, case we are about to bring in? Why is it important that we should follow the 1899 Constitution? <laughs> Well, since we, everybody or <laughs> majority of the population of the, of the Philippines, uh, want change. It might as well be a complete change, complete logical change into another form of government. Because if we remain with the same form of uh, government under the 1987 Constitution, then there will be no changes at all. And even if we only change uh, incompletely, you know, in logic, there's such a thing as when you change something, the substance of something, you got to change the whole thing. Because if you don't change substantially, all the natures and features of that substance remain to contaminate some more. So without complete logical change of the system, 
not just a mere overhaul of the uh, present system because overhaul means that you are just overhauling some parts or making new some of the parts of the same system but the same problem will will remain because there will be contamination deep rooted entrenchment or corruption will still remain lurking in the same substance so might as well if we change we change completely and orderly and what more could be more orderly and peaceful and valid and still existing than the Manolos 1899 constitution it's there all we need to do is just transfer ship to a to an existing ship that's ready to go now from the from the sinking ship of 1997 constitution as uh, geometry says, the whole is equal to the, uh, the sum of the whole is uh, the whole is the sum of all parts. So, some part the whole the whole is the sum of all parts. Okay, do you also have a question, uh, Dr. Bartolabat? Uh, I'm recognizing you if you have a question for the speaker. Ano para ganda yung ano yung proposition niya? Ang kailangan lang uh, talagang uh, may movement, malakas. Yes, uh, uh, trying to build uh, uh, with the presentation uh, of the Posadas. Uh, May I just you that the third is not uh, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm actually with you, with your, you know, with your advocacy. At kailangan may movement na malaki, malakas. So kung kailan tayo, how do you go about it? Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm also recognizing now uh, Jingle Menes uh, because you have not spoken yet. And after that, I will recognize uh, uh, Geoffrey Balsa again and then later on uh, Giancarlo. Go ahead, uh, 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 Jingle, go ahead. You unmute yourself and it's your turn. Yes, uh, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Sir Hill, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> this is a very simple question. If 1899 constitution will be adopted um, or will take effect, uh, will these uh, government agencies or local government uh, organizations like uh, the OHFDA, IATF, and other global organizations that are connected here in the Philippines, will this all be vanished or, uh, no, or dissolved? And uh, will this uh, uh, fake pandemic will be ended? Uh, right after taking effect the uh, 1899 constitution. Thank you. Hey, Dr. Posadas, you can reply. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Figure, can I request Melchor to, I defer to Mr. Uh, Attorney Melchor Magdamo to answer for me, please. Okay. Uh, the words, will they, will 1899 constitution vanish or dissolve? No, yun, yun ang question ni Jingle, no? Gradually, well, yes, gradually. Mm -hmm. Gradually, how fast I do not know. Faster the better. Yes. Well, uh, point of information if these are treaties that we have to inherit uh, and we are bound by those treaties, we have to repudiate and withdraw from those treaties to be able to stop them. That is just a uh, legal convention of the law. Okay, Small letter. A follow up question there or what? Bravo, Yankee. Bravo, young double. Charlie. Hindi. Ah. Letters. Okay. Small letters. B Y. B Y C as in Charlie. Z yeah, as in you know, you're talking. Uh, please mute yourself. B Y C B. Four five nine. Go ahead, uh, Jingle. Are you satisfied with the with the answer? Uh, I hope I hope so. It will answer as long as uh, this uh. This uh, scamdemic will have a solution in the very, 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 in the soonest, in the soonest time. Uh, I think so, I think so. I, I think the uh, comment there that's relevant made by uh, Melchor Magdamo would be that if uh, there are strong powers that are made available to the executive because of this adoption of the uh, 1899 constitution, then perhaps a more vigorous response to end the pandemic would occur, but he was not very definitive about when it would happen, but it will be much more speedy than the way it is done now. 
Okay. I think so. If this, uh, if the ADOH and ATF will be no longer existing or will not be, will no longer be functioning in our country, I think so. That this uh, pandemic will end also as long as this uh, organization will. Uh, because this, this are the organization that are, uh, so this one, they are mandating the country. They are the people connected to the uh, globalists to dictate this kind of a situation of us. Because uh, they give us so much uh, suffering in the whole country, and every, especially to the small Filipinos. Thank you. That's right. Uh, we have to be able to do what you want to do. We have to be able to shift to the Valoros Constitution first. So that is the first order of business. So go ahead. Uh, Okay, you recognize. Yes, thank you. I wish to express support for two things. The first is the reason for <clears throat> shifting to the 1899 Constitution is it's like, have you ever found yourself lost when you were driving because you're not getting to the destination you wanted? The, re the way to get back is to find out where we made the wrong turns. We made wrong turns in 1987. We made wrong turns in 1973. We also made the wrong, wrong turns in 1935, being accepting ourselves as a commonwealth. Therefore, the only way we can find our way back is to start from the beginning, our original destiny, our original point which is 1899, the first republic, which was never, which was never uh, dissolved and whose so sovereignty was never ceded. Hmm? The second is, well, hmm. we're dealing with the word sovereignty. That is the core of the question of jingle. LT. We have to understand what sovereignty hmm. means. And in the democracy, Sovereignty begins with us as the individual. The IATF and the WHO has actually violated mm -hmm. our very sovereignty by expressly forbidding us to explore traditional remedies that we could resort to with our doctors based on the Hippocratic Oath, the Helsinki Declaration, that the doctors have the responsibility to apply therapies based on comparing notes with their peers in the same way scientists do. We have been deprived of those rights. And this 1899 constitution will enable us to assert our sovereignty again, such that rather than simply dismissing or are quitting from the IATF and who, we will tell them, will you respect our sovereignty or not? Because if you will not respect our sovereignty, then you give us no choice but to leave. So this, will, this has to be a very educational revolution and understanding of what the rule of law is under a democracy, under a republic. Thank you very much. Uh, very well said, uh, Mr. Geoffrey Mose. Another way of saying it is the way to the future is through the past. And so we are tracing our past so that we can go into our future in a more secure and a more sovereign manner. So our next speaker recognizes Giancarlo. Go ahead, Giancarlo. Giancarlo, you recognize of a CDO, Cagayan de Oro. Giancarlo? Okay, since you're not speaking, I, I recognize uh, Melchor McDonald. Unmute yourself, Melchor, you're muted. Uh, just a short point uh, to carry on from the comment of Jingle and Joffrey about uh, the pandemic and uh, our right to heal ourselves in the best way. No, Maybe what we can do now, let this group, this parliamentary group, uh, designate our health minister to neutralize Secretary Duque. <laughs> uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Bartolabak, if you will volunteer. Uh, you know what? 
Let's leave politics to politicians. Leave science to scientists. That's all. It's as simple as that. By the way, Dr. Bartolomeo is the valedictorian of my class. And just like Duterte, I follow my valedictorian. Long, long <laughs> time ago. Stop mentioning that anymore, Dr. Hildebrand. Well, go ahead. I'm recognizing uh, Aida Enriquez. Go ahead, Aida. I saw you raise your hand. You're muted. You're muted, Aida. Unmute yourself. Okay. 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 Uh, I was thinking. Uh, we Mama, have been electric about... mo. Mama, ang electric pan mo is uh, ano? Is do is, is the one making the noise, unnecessary noise. Baka switch off, please. Switch it off. Switch it off. Hello. Okay. Okay. Now. okay. Uh, I was thinking about the party list. We have not, I know, we have not acknowledged that yet. What happens with the party list program? Are we going to still use that, or are we going to ditch that? Doctor Pusan, can you reply to that? Yeah. Uh, since. Uh, New qualifications for elections or for candidates will have to be uh, uh, formed and uh, changed, so to speak. And uh, the fact that uh, there's a move now, even now, for the abolishment or disqualification of party lists because of their... Uh, well, so-called association with the uh, Communist Party of the Philippines. So it will depend, maybe at that point in time, when, the, when decidedly, some way or another, that they are no longer qualified to run for uh, this time uh, as a member of the One House uh, Parliament. So we will... Uh, have to just watch out because after all there are there are questionable now as to their affiliation and their loyalty and allegiance to our republic so in anticipation of that we will the new uh, form of parliamentary federal government will have a commission to see to it or investigate or decide and on a process wherein they can probably will have to be eliminated even as candidates. So they will, in a way, no longer exist. Does, it, uh, does it go for all the party list or just for those that are taken as against the government? Yes. I mean, that is more... Uh, 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 common sense in that uh, they will be selective. Okay. So everything will be uh, That means the, the party list system stays, but we are going to be very selective in getting this uh, party list to enter. Correct. Correct. Okay. Because uh, I know of some party lists who were not able to enter because they don't have the money. What happens to them? Well, maybe that will again depend on the qualifications and conditions and terms of, uh, of being a candidate to even the prime minister uh, position and the, uh, uh, as a member of, uh, of the one house uh, parliament. So maybe but money will not be so... Uh, uh, important anymore because then there will be the true uh, uh, will or sovereignty of independence for electing uh, uh, officials uh, will have to uh, fill up the uh, 
the gap uh, for qualifying uh, for the terms and conditions of being a candidate. The because they were determining the ano, qualification. So how about the informalic? Yes, yes. Uh, that is a very big uh, problem. The requirement before you become uh, accredited as a party list, you have to have the money first. You have to give the money first, and that is not a small amount. It no, runs into were, millions also. Yeah. There will be a new set. There will be a new set of uh, qualifications, terms, and conditions for candidacy. So rest assured that since you are going to change, you might as well change anything that will not be to the best interest of the people. Oh, okay. I agree with you on that. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Posada. Okay, welcome. Wilma, you have the floor. Wilma Manzanillo, you have the floor. Wilma, go ahead. Wilma, you have the floor because you were flashing your... Uh, I come later, uh, earlier. Wilma Manzanillo, you have the floor. I recognize you. Wilma, do you hear me? You have the floor right now. Okay, since Wilma is not hear me, I recognize uh, Giancarlo of the CDO. Go ahead, Giancarlo, you have the floor. Giancarlo, you have the floor. Okay, uh, since you're not speaking, I recognize John Fabiano. Go ahead, John. Oh, oh, I, have, I, have, I have a unique question to, to Sir Robert Osano. Can, can we change our, the, the name of our country from Philippines back to Maharlika according to the 99 Constitution? Yeah, maybe... Uh, <laughs> That will be taken up in the new uh, one house uh, parliament, uh, um, one house uh, parliamentary uh, uh, congress. And if there's a resolution to change uh, the uh, name of the Republic of the Philippines, so be it. What can we do if it becomes a law? But that doesn't really uh, matter much because uh, what is in a name, a rose is a rose, other than what you can uh, uh, perceive it for. Sure. So if there's one resolution and a law that's passed to change the Philippines or the Philippines name, so be it. There's really nothing that we can do much about it. Uh, okay. And my another question is, what, what if the, the war, what, what if the war by other country, especially China against our country happened after our constitution back to 1899? That's like what happened in Philippine American War the year the Malolos Constitution was launched. What are we going to solve this conflict? Because other superpower countries, especially from US, do not want our country to be developed. Well, when the time comes, we will have our own blood, sweat, and tears to defend, if not with the bamboos and bolos. We have no choice but to defend the new constitution and the new government system. <laughs> okay. Uh, anybody else who would like to ask a question, recognize Ida. Go ahead, Ida, you have the floor. You are again muted. You are again muted. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to ask how do we uh, no, how do we go on with our foreign uh, uh, what do you call this our foreign service our treaties our uh, our agreements with the, with other countries how do we do that yes. Yeah, first off, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, privileged speech, that our policy will be always be self-reliance. And uh, okay. a, a, a nation without self-reliance is not uh, truly independent at all, because we will still be uh, dealing with uh, 
uh, international uh, relationship uh, uh, under influence of either uh, colonialism or any other influence that intervenes with our uh, sovereignty. So uh, the, uh, we will also start with the uh, new form of government with self-reliance and at arm's length. And we will see it that we will probably renegotiate and make adjustments with all other existing treaties. And that will be taken up as the time goes by. And accordingly, when the time comes for us to really consider everything else other than our uh, own national and uh, local issues. But rest assured oh. that we will make all the adjustments as per our self-reliance stance and independent foreign policy. And it doesn't have to be anti-American or any other country at all. It has to be at arm's length dealing with all other countries, be it in Asia or in, in Europe or anywhere else in the world. Sir, if I may, Go ahead. so Go ahead. so it's going to be on a pace uh, on a case to case basis. It's not going to be like uh, we have the we have the parliament and then we abrogate everything. It's going to be a case to case basis. Am I correct? Yeah, there? yeah, yeah, yeah. In the in the parliament itself, when it's already formed uh, after the twenty two elections for the parliament. You have to remember that the existing members of Congress and Senate now will have to continue on as members of that yes. uh, temporary parliament. So whatever they do will be according already to the 1899 Constitution. Remember, there is no longer House of, of Representatives and Senate. There will just be one House parliament. And they will have to act accordingly, uh, make adjustments or commissions or investigations, whatever they need to do under the legislative uh, legislature, and uh, it will be all according to the 99 uh, constitution. Okay, thank you very much for that, Mr. Speaker. Okay, uh, any more questions right now? Would you like to ask a question? Okay, Wilma Manzanillo, you'd like to talk? Bienvenido Lorque, would you like to contribute to the discussion here? So nobody else has a question. Uh, you are now uh, releasing uh, uh, the speaker on a point of privilege from uh, the interpolation phase. Okay, so uh, no, no more questions on the uh, point of privilege of the speaker of the, uh, of the delegation from Pangasinan. So we will close that interpolation phase and we will recommend uh, the uh, speech to the review of the Committee on Constitutional Reforms, which we have in our group. And uh, any resolutions that will come out of it, including any resolutions that the speaker has uh, prepared will be studied by that committee, and we will go into the plenary session again on June 12 to ratify that resolution as the sense of the Congress. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Robert Posadas, for that presentation. Mr. Speaker, I wonder, so this in effect, uh, do we have to right now on the first plenary uh, make a resolution to adopt and recognize the 1899 constitution as our a constitution to take place uh, on June 12, 9, uh, 2021? Yes, a call, to the, a call for the uh, country perhaps uh, to adopt it. We can adopt that as a resolution. We are not empowered to impose it in the country, but a call, we are empowered to make the call. So we will make that call on June 12. In a resolution so, okay. your group together with the Committee on Constitutional Reforms will prepare. To, to make this uh, event more, this uh, session more effective and more historic, so to speak, can we uh, uh, put forth a resolution to suspend the national emergency law? And from there on, every, everything will uh, emanate uh, 
accordingly adjustments and and recognition of a new secretary of uh, Department of Health and so forth and so on to uh, to suspend the uh, the suspension of our individual rights under this uh, lockdown and national emergency, which after all, in reality, has already expired. So therefore, it's null and void and no longer imposed on the barangay units or LGUs that they can already act with independence and, and, uh, and uh, their own uh, decisions and discretions to to make sure that their uh, units are governed accordingly to their needs. Uh, like the, uh, the adjustments that uh, Governor Gwen Garcia in Cebu made, which is very effective now, as though the emergency in law does not, no longer apply in Cebu because uh, Gwen Garcia is acting independently according to her jurisdiction's uh, privileges and uh, um, so I'd like to propose a resolution to suspend the national emergency law that's existing now in the Philippines. Okay, I'm recognizing uh, Melchor Magdano. He would like to say something about that. You recognize Melchor. As a matter of strategy, what we can do for publicity and impact, perhaps uh, we can issue a resolution, this, this parliament. That, there you go. Uh, 14, yeah. Congratulating, <laughs> congratulating uh, Governor Garcia because she was correct on that point uh, legally when she said Cebu is no longer under the jurisdiction of the medical martial law because of a provision, a clear provision in section 105 of the local government code. The IATF has a, has a, has a life of only six months. So they are way beyond the six month period already. So Governor Gwen Garcia of Cebu is correct. So if we, if we want to make public, make noise, no, this one, this, this parliament right now, that we, if we want to make noise, we can simply by congratulating, issue a resolution congratulating Governor there you go. Correct. Gwen Garcia for <laughs> her bravery. Because uh, yeah. she is correct legally. This 1899 parliament can can uh, uh, make waves no? on, yeah. on June 12, perhaps. We, we are make the people aware. Yes, correct. We are the 1899 parliament, but we are not the sitting government. We are a shadow government. We are a shadow of the meeting. Our resolutions would be applying to ourselves and to the recommendation to the people who are in power right now, as well as to the rest of the country. Anything yeah. else, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Demo, Mr. Speaker, recognize. it's considered to be a shadow resolution to have an impact, at least to get attention and perception that we are moving on. We have we don't, Very we don't timely. Do shadow resolutions. We have a resolution that applies to our shadow status as yes. a shadow of the parliament of the web. Correct. And that's what we have to do. Nevertheless, it's a documented and put forth. Yes, and that is why your speech is being uh, referred to the Committee on Constitutional Reforms and any other relevant committees to create all of those resolutions, which we will present in first reading and ratification immediately on June 12 plenary session of this Congress. So I gather that's a second demotion from uh, Melchor uh, Magdamo. You have your second demotion from, from Quezon. Yes, second demotion. And I, I saw also Michael Alunan. You haven't spoken yet. I saw him there in the attendees. Uh, I recognize Michael Alunan if he wants to say something. Uh, Mr. Michael Alunan, you recognize? You're, you're muted right now. You're muted. OK, go ahead, Mr. Alunan. Michael Alunan, we cannot hear you. Go ahead. Oh, he disappeared. Where is he now? He's gone. Mm -hmm. there. Go ahead, Mr. Alunan. You recognize. Your video is sort of uh, mixed up. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Alunan, Michael Alunan. We cannot hear you.
Something wrong with the connection of Michael Aluna. We cannot hear him at all. No, we have to wait till uh, we can hear him. So anybody else right now? Okay, Michael Aluna, you're there now? We cannot hear you. Okay, uh, there's some, he's signaling us that he cannot talk or whatever. We have to go to other speakers right now. Uh, Jan Carla, you were raising your hand earlier. Go ahead, you can talk right now. Okay, if there are anybody else who would, uh, who could not, uh, would like to add any comments so far? So, uh, okay, so any any more suggestions, uh, Dr. Robert Posadas, before we close your circulation uh, and then we proceed with other business, if there are any more? Uh, may I speak? Go ahead, uh, you recognize Jaime Hernandez? Uh, yes. Uh, if we, just as we have already decided to come out with a uh, with the shadow resolution on that on that uh, matter being raised by attorney Mandamo. Uh, <clears throat> one point that we could I think uh, suggest is that uh, for the president to to declare a, a revolutionary government, the president being our national leader. In the revolutionary government is so that I have now experienced all this. You know, I am now in the hospital. And then I think this happens to everyone else who needs medical attention. The money that would otherwise go to elections could go to defraying all the money, uh, to defraying all the, the expenses needed by the people so that we could uh, draw the support of the people instead of the money going to elections again. Because in every elections, the, the people who gets richer are the printers, Smartmatic for one will be there. And then the printers, all these businesses who had uh, linked or who had linked to elections will be uh, getting the public public money. Okay, if, so we could come out with a, with a resolution also that uh, to, to put up a government now, a revolutionary government under the 1899, we are telling the people that we are uh, sensitive now to the to the, uh, to the, what is happening now to our country. The pandemic. Especially that we are now under medical emergency. So that would save our country big money instead of, again, spending for nonsense election. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, that's noted and maybe Dr. Posadas will uh take note of that as well as uh, Tony Melchor uh, uh, Magdamo. Thank you, so, uh, first speaker. Or, uh, I think Ida is raising his hands. I'm recognizing you, Ida. Yes, uh, regarding our, uh, no, our election on 2022, many people are asking, uh, no, uh, are putting their hopes into a changed barangay because our barangay uh, officials are 
uh, in the holdover capacity na. How long have they been in office? Ano lang siya, extended lang siya ng extended. But this time, they said, the barangay officers will also be elected. There, in short, there will be new barangay officers by 2022 election. So if we do not have an election, uh, our lowest unit will not change. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, there is a, it's a big a point, problem. Point of information, there is some uh, proposal that uh, in case uh, something drastic happens to the national governance, like a shift to the Malolos constitution or a declaration of a revolutionary government by the uh, highest authorities in the land, perhaps uh, the local elections would proceed, uh, but not the national elections. So most likely the priority would be given to uh, um, the barangay elections as well, since they are the lowest unit of the governance in the country. So we can have that That's because if you recall our history, uh, the Philippines started uh, having local elections in 1860. Yes. But, the, but the Gobernador Silio or the Gobernador uh, General is always appointed by Spain. But the local presidentes and the local Gobernador Silios were already elected by the people since 1860. So local elections can proceed, but the national elections may be suspended. But this is just only speculation, it's just a point of information I'm sharing with the body. Any more so we, so we can no, no, we can try to use that. Yes, that is a part of our history. It can be applied. Okay, I agree. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. So, uh, well, as uh, the um, I will bring the uh, interpolation uh, process of uh, in the chat and. Uh, I now open the floor for other business that the plenary can take up. Anything else being suggested? Riaco Isabello, you want to talk? Do you, you, you recognize? No, sir. Okay. So, uh, is Michael Alunan, are you able to talk now? Uh, Michael Alunan, you recognize? <coughs> you, can, uh, you can unmute yourself. Are you not uh, able to unmute yourself? Now you're you're unmuted now. You can talk. You try to talk. There's none. There's no. Well, he does, I think his audio is not working. Hello. I could not uh, share anything. With. Okay, yes, uh, Jaime Hernandez, you're again recognized. If you want to add anything to what you're saying. Yes, thank you. As uh, it is very important to note here that uh, the social revol the revolutionary mood is always uh, present if we are to really uh, react or act on having a revolutionary government. For example, we have a problem, uh, let's say <coughs> every local government has its problem, especially, for example, when it comes to, to local governance uh, and with respect to corruption, and then we, uh, I am referring to a particular, I will not mention here for now, but for example, the national government has been unloading uh, the ERA, Internal Revenue Funds. And there was this, uh, from my personal knowledge, uh, this, there is this uh, town that has spent all the, spent all the ERA funds on supposedly to be given to the people the officials have pocketed the money, all of the money. So by having, by declaring a revolutionary government, by instituting the 1899 elections, we will now, our 1899 constitution, we will now forestall people now in office from getting the era funds again. So maybe here is the situation now where the people, for example, if there is a people, group of people now seizing, seizing the town hall, uh, the provincial capital or town halls and provincial capitals, 
we will we cannot avoid that if we are to really if we are to really uh, get this uh, this structural problem uh, this structural problem we had we have now in in local government so we have to we have to seize power we have to seize the for example this is a, a kind of operational uh, an operative act in the making that people set to to uh, to install a local uh, revolutionary government will have will have to preliminarily seize seize power to stop them from getting all the era to be targeted again by them that is my personal that is my personal knowledge Okay, Hello. I think uh, with regard to your comment, I would like to uh, elicit uh, a comment from uh, Benvenido Lorque. Mr. Benvenido Lorque, if you are listening and you are hearing me, I'm giving you the floor so that you can make a response to the comment of uh, Mr. Jaime Hernandez. Uh, go ahead, uh, Mr. Benvenido Lorque. Uh, maybe Mr. Loki is not uh, in his uh, post right now. He has no response from uh, us. So uh, any other business you would like to take up before we close the session? I think uh, since nobody else is uh, bringing up new business, I would like to give our thanks to uh, Dr. Kosadas for his uh, point of privilege uh, presentation today and his patience in uh, answering questions and also to those who have given and shared your expertise with us in clarifying matters, I would like to uh, give thanks as well. So our next uh, plenary session is scheduled at, uh, on uh, July 12th and I also would like to thank uh, Dr. Rufino Bartolabak for facilitating this. He is the one who was uh, giving us the facility to have a uh, an use of the uh, Zoom account, which is uh, without interruption. So you notice that there were no 40 minute interruptions in our talk today. So um, unless there are any other questions, I will bang the gavel now to uh, adjourn the session, but not Sinijai. Adjourn it for the next uh, session that we'll be having again on June 12th. Okay, so uh, thank you everybody for uh, being in attendance and I hope to see you again in the uh, scheduled uh, plenary on June 12th, uh, which will be also our Independence Day. Thank you very much, Jingle, Wilma, Jaime, everybody who's thank here. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Uh, Speaker. Attorney Melchor and particularly Dr. Posadas who prepared and presented a very good speech for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for thank conducting you, successfully our first congressional yeah. session, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good day to everybody. Okay. Good day.